welcome back to this particular class where we will be talking about dmq that is the dutch musculoskeletal questionnaire in last class we talk about uh, neos survey uh, for the musculoskeletal disorder and this is another uh, survey which can be taken up to understand or uh, to get the prevalence data in in different uh, dimension uh, through this particular questionnaire so let us understand it so the dutch musculoskeletal questionnaire allows to measure work related risk factors and symptoms very similar however the questionnaires types are little different okay so it helps you to understand or measure technically we call it measurement okay so maybe in in you know in scale okay to measure the work related so here it is very important uh, the dutch musculoskeletal questionnaire is very specific to work related musculoskeletal discomfort so it measures in worker population it measures in quick yet standardized way because it is very easy quickly we get the data but it's a stand it's standardized process the standard version of questionnaire um, uh, has two version one is short version another is large version so one is nine pages with around 25 questions per page and each questions to be filled by the worker and it may take around 30 minutes so it's little lengthy uh, and another version is there which is short version we call it it is only four pages and it is you know an extended version that is the uh, more than nine pages that is the 14 pages so standard one is nine pages the short version is four pages and the larger uh, no extended version is 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 of 14 pages now question is which one you are going to use it absolutely depend as I keep on saying this that it's not uh, defined right so it absolutely depend that what is your interest what is your research objectives or research questions so before you introduce any one of them first you, you need to read them through you need to understand what are the varieties of information that you are going to get from these three types and based on that you can use uh, uh, that which one is suitable to you and you can use any one of them but the pattern is quite similar the questionnaire seeks to obtain a simple representation of relationship between work task okay work task and musculoskeletal symptoms work related musculoskeletal, musculoskeletal systems are seen as results of high internal physical loads which is caused by poor posture movements and forceful exertion these are the three major occupational factors one is poor posture movement and forceful exertion now here question is if you use dutch musculoskeletal questionnaire and you found that yes the there is a problem and problem is connected to posture then you may take a decision that would you like to go for posture evaluation or not so it it is a preliminary tool but it gives you a direction that where uh, how you can take your research further other factors it's not only these three occupational factors other factors may be some working condition may be extreme environment uh, may be uh, lot of noise may be um, may be vibration uh, individual factors like gender age uh, presence of pregnancy and many other things psychosocial aspects and the lifestyle okay these are also kind of influence factor and that we will get an understanding uh, how M msd is associated with these factors so from dutch musculoskeletal questionnaire we get these kind of information 
So, questionnaire includes uh, some sections, we will take those sections one by one. First is background variables like what are the personal information. So, you need to know the age, gender, education, duration of employment, history, work history and shift work. So, you can understand how many variables from the first portion, first section of your survey you have 6 total variables right. Age which is very important which is very much connected or you know uh, influencing factor of musculoskeletal disorder, gender, education, duration of employment, work history, shift work. Then we get an understanding about the task, prevalence rates and perceived heaviness of task demand. So, it is not only we talk about the task, we de describe the task, we take an understanding that how, how uh, you know heavy that task is. So, that type of information also we get from this particular questionnaire. So, we get the perceived heaviness of the task. Musculoskeletal workload like posture, forces and movement. Also, we get information about the work pace, ok. What is the pace? Mainly it is the perceived pace and the psychosocial working condition like how do I feel the demand, control and autonomy because you understand musculoskeletal disorder is not only the response of physical uh, no discomfort, ok. It is very much connected with your psychosocial aspect, ok. So, to understand that control and autonomy in your particular work setup, if it is not in the optimum range, it may cause the musculoskeletal discomfort or disorder. So, we get also an understanding about control and autonomy in the job. Work organization, the, the, what is the type of work organization it is and the social support and work satisfaction. So, on the same job if I am satisfied, I may not feel the pain or difficulty in working. Whereas, the same job if somebody is not liking, is not satisfied to him or her, they, he or she may feel uh, no, find lot of body ache, maybe neck pain, elbow pain, trunk pain and many other things, right. So, these are the uh, variables, major four variables from the work pace and psychosocial working condition. Also, we get an understanding about the health that is the musculoskeletal disorder and more detailed symptoms. We talk about lifestyle uh, that section is also present and perceived bottlenecks and ideas for improvement. So, here it is more participatory in nature, right. So, you get responses or we get suggestions from the participant, from the subject. So, suggested by the workers themselves. So, they suggest that what are the bottlenecks are present in this particular uh, activity or what are the varieties of things are possible they feel that it will improve the situation. So, you get lot of participatory approach from this particular survey or particular questionnaire. So, musculoskeletal workload that is the posture, force and movement is addressed in 63 questions, in total 63 questions. These questions are, cat are categorized into again 7 indices and 4 separate questions. One first one is the force exertion, dynamic load, static load, repetitive load, ergonomics environment, vibration and climate. Now, here you can understand how detailed it is. Maybe in a particular set, you have only the force as a factor along with vibration. Maybe rest other factors are not present or present at the negligible rate. Okay. So, when you talk about the intervention, when we talk about the uh, starting your um, design process, you can have 
very detailed idea that what are the impacting factors and where do you start your design intervention right so this particular uh, tool is very helpful helpful in that particular cases so we have seven indices force exertion dynamic load static load so uh, dynamic load separately static load separately repetitive load ergonomics environment vibration and climate everywhere you have number of questions in total we have 63 questions so that's why i suggest everyone should download this dutch musculoskeletal questionnaire and you should go through it now let us understand the content of each indices now when we are talking about force exertion we are going to talk about lifting carrying pulling pushing forceful movement with your arm high physical exertion lifting in you know unfavorable posture so here force exertion is associated with it, with the portion so lot of questions are associated with such factors so, all these factors are going to get evaluated under force exertion and we are going to get those indices right then dynamic load when we are talking about dynamic load so trunk movement so what is the kind of movement it is it is extension flexion twisting uh, side bending what it is okay so all these factors so trunk movement mainly we will be talking about in static load of course if it is less bending how are holding for longer hours right twisted trunk posture so it is twisted suppose um, i am away from my midline body midline but i am holding it's it's not maybe 10 degree or maybe 6 degree or 7 degree however i'm holding it for three hours now definitely that is going to give you a lot of stress on your trunk muscles right so understanding those static load again is going to uh, give you a direction how do you modify it how do you intervene it then repetitive load so working in the same posture making the same movement with trunk arm hand wrist legs you know making all small movements with you know fingers all those things comes under repetitive movement ergonomics environment so available working space no support you no know, uh, maybe the floor is very slippery uneven so they are falling trouble with uh, no reaching things with tools not enough room to have to perform so maybe you know uh, i am working here uh, for a particular tool i have to reach two meters always i have a difficulty or i should i am bending myself to get those things so such factors are considered here uh, uh, vibration definitely either whole body vibration or hand arm vibration that we are going to get an understanding in this particular section climate extreme uh, environmental condition so either very hot or <coughs> very cold is going to cause a lot of discomfort right so those things also is going to get evaluated uncomfortable posture uh, sitting at um, uh, you know in in different rate uh, standing walking all those things also we need to get uh, we we get an understanding about this factor in this particular uh, uh, the seven indices okay 63 questions now moving forward uh, we will give some more introduction about this that how we are going to use this so we have 63 questions seven indices right now how do we introduce them so these questions are formulated to indicate the presence or absence of exposure vibration is there or not extreme climate is there or not 
So, if not formulate the amount of discomfort caused by the exposure, then you can ignore. Okay. The precise formulation is based on several field studies using preliminary versions of the questionnaire because it is not that in one day or you know one year it has been developed, it has developed and then during different uh, field studies, field observation, experimental studies, it was in uh, no evolving, it is evolving. So, uh, many a times it happens that you know they, are, they, they publish the modified version. So, this qualitative approach does not quantify the frequency and duration of variability variables that is not possible over here, but only qualitative understanding of all these uh, factors. So, uh, first what you should do? You should prepare that how do you collect data, the actual survey that you conduct, then data entry, analysis and report. So, uh, mostly we get percentage and once we have percentage, we can do some kind of association and correlation among each variables that is possible with this data and then you can implement that particular result. Now, when I am talking about preparation, exactly what do we do? So, first we define the population uh, for whom we are going to introduce this particular tool. So, we define it suppose uh, for my case uh, in a particular study I want to do for the bank worker ok, Low, uh, the, uh, the maybe cashier ok. So, my definition of my population is cashier in some national banks ok. So, I know for whom I am talking about. Now, introduction of that particular project in the worker group Okay, so, we will go, we will talk, these are the objectives and we will introduce to uh, introduce those cashiers to that particular study. Analysis of prevalent uh, task in that particular group using this thing and defining the way the DMQ is administered to the workers that we will do. So, we are ready to administer before we we introduce that DMQ, we should have these things ready. Now, question is why do we need to prepare our subject? If our subjects are subject means the participant right are not aware about uh, the uh, objective of the study, they may not be able to give you uh, proper uh, uh, no answers. Now, it is not that if you explain it, you will get 100 percent correct data. It is absolutely sometimes happen that you know you get some kind of wrong information. So, there are some statistical uh, method through which uh, you, uh, you know get, uh, get the outlier done so that uh, you remove those uh, those data which is actually disturbing. Okay, so, uh, but if you prepare it in this way, hopefully your number of outliers will be little less. So, defining the population at risk, it is very easy as I explained it still um, it is in uh, no in a detailed way it is depicted here. So, groups of workers should be you know selected who are performing more or less identical tasks as I mentioned here for this particular example I have taken bank cashier. This enables the identification of an association between symptoms found and specific working condition. The reference group known to be exposed to a lesser physical workload should also be used to enable better comparative interpretation or the of that particular result. And here uh, requirement is minimum 20 workers per group is recommended to enable the valid conclusion. So, if you have group 1, group 2, group 3 you should have 2020 participant so that you can have some good comparison because you have to perform some kind of statistics. So, this is requirement. Now, introduction of the 
project to the worker. So, as I mentioned, you should tell more about the research objective so that they are aware and the respondents um, participate in the study actively. Analysis of prevalent uh, task in that particular group. So, uh, using existing document and discussion with management and the worker and inventory of the number and type of most prevalent task should be compiled. If the tasks are very heterogeneous uh, uh, you know, in nature, that should be subdivided into more homogeneous units according to their physical workload. Now, here I talked about cashier, um, maybe if, if we are talking about only bank employee. So, bank employee, uh, maybe we can have subdivision cashier, um, customer care representative, uh, the person who is handling only the, you know, uh, uh, some kind of documents or maintaining the inventory. So, maybe we can subgroup them. So, if it is only bank employee, uh, under bank employee, you can have such small, small categorization. So, very close work activity according with the, because you are talking about musculoskeletal disorder, right? So, here lot of physical activities. So, accordingly, according to the physical load, we can categorize them. So, that way we can categorize them according to the physical load. Now, after that defining the way the DMQ is administered to the worker. So, you need to explain them. So, three possible options. One postural, uh, no, postal survey. So, you can uh, send uh, the questionnaire to them uh, you, uh, by post and you ask them to fill it up and post it back. That is one option. Distribution in the workplace with a request to complete the questionnaire because I mentioned no, this is very lengthy thing. DMQ, the original one is 9 pages, short version is of 4 pages, another version, extended version is 14 pages, right. So, it is it's very lengthy thing. Even if it is a short version, still it is a lengthy, right. So, it takes time. When we are talking about DMQ, it takes time. So, so, it may happen that you, you prepare the subject, you take all the data and you, uh, you distribute the questionnaire to them and request, okay, fine. Once you finish it up, uh, after your working hours, uh, maybe you can give it back to the uh, interview or the researcher or you can have some kind of group session. So, you know, in a group, people are sitting, you are explaining and everybody is filling up the, uh, uh, you know, uh, each section. So, all these three possible way we can collect our data. Now, we talk about the actual survey because you know, it is it's very tedious job. This DMQ is quite tedious. It takes time, you know, to fill it up. It takes um, uh, kind of 30 minutes as I mentioned in the process, right? So, it is uh, you need to know the detailed steps or detailed understanding to avoid any kind of discrepancy in the data collection. So, in this phase, DMQ has to be printed and distributed, response rates has to be have to be monitored to be able to send to the reminder no, no, uh, if you if there is so somebody is not sending within 6 days or 7 days. So, you have to send the reminder. It is extremely important that a large portion of the work are selected actually to participate in this survey because it is a survey. And there is always a possibility many of them will complete half, many will, uh, will, uh, will not be able to understand, they will drop. Okay. So, it is always uh, if, if you target um, you know 20 data actual, maybe you have to distribute among 40 or 50. So, it absolutely depends what type of population you have, who are the, are your subject, how, how good they are in responding back, okay. So, this is very, uh, 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 this needs lot of follow up also, okay. So, that way we can have our survey done.
once it is there now everything is with you now you have to do the data entry and you have to analyze and you have to prepare the report now data entry you can use any um, kind of software maybe we can use spss ncss or maybe you can use simple excel uh, to you know first look at your data so the use of statistical program you can uh, calculate the result so, normally in in traditional process we use normal excel spreadsheet uh, uh, to understand the length breadth of the data and how it actually looks after that we go for analysis okay so basic data maybe we can enter in a excel spreadsheet so reporting of the result of the survey can be done on a basis of a few tables summarizing few major finding which is expected to come so responses and general characteristics of the workers involved which will come from the background uh, what is the task prevalence and perceived exertion physical workload psychosocial workload and 12 months prevalence of musculoskeletal symptoms per body area okay so for each body part what is the kind of annual prevalence 12 months means annual prevalence data that we are going to get at the basic level once we have these information maybe according to uh, research objective we can do another uh, other kind of analysis so data should be presented uh, for all worker group selected and the reference population uh, again this is not very specific this is this is based on your objective okay so maybe you have two uh, comparative group okay or you have only your working group where you want to present it so it's absolutely mm, uh, not defined it's absolutely depend on your uh, study if the number of respondents is greater than 20 differences between groups should be uh, statistically tested for significance it is statistically different or not some kind of software packages are available by the same group of researchers so if needed you can use that as well however most of the cases people use their own uh, analytical method to understand or and the analyze that particular data now coming to the implementation on the basis of the screening results those worker groups or workplace uh, or the workplaces requiring a more, more thorough ergonomic analysis so suppose i am talking about here you have these five categories right now here you see age is a factor and when we are talking about physical load posture is a factor so maybe you can start understanding that what is the relation for this particular job and these two variable okay or maybe not age maybe duration of exposure right so duration of exposure and the posture and this annual prevalence how these three are connected so we may start understanding so absolutely it's you know in which direction my analysis will go i cannot tell you right now it's absolutely based on your research objective you have to derive so i told you how do you collect data what are the varieties of data you will get we will get but how do you interpret it how do you take it further it is up to you so you can start you know um, exploring it in more and then maybe if you have any doubt you can um, uh, inquire back 
So, following implementation, a second survey using DMQ can be conducted to uh, know, quantify the improvement in workload and health among the workers involved. Also, this part is not mandatory. You, you can have, you cannot have, okay, you may not have. So, it is absolutely up to your objective. So, what are the advantages? Let us talk about that because I am taking these, uh, this whole process in this way. First, I am explaining the tool. I am telling you uh, how the procedure, what is the procedure to implement it and what are the advantages and the limitation of this particular tool. So, you can really understand is this tool is useful for your study or not. If it is not useful, then what else? Okay. So, you have a basket you have a basket of method, you have a basket of tool, you can pick one, one, one uh, depending on your research. So, it is a standardized method, relatively inexpensive and easy. I said inexpensive depending on what kind of expense you are talking about, okay. As it is a simple pen and paper method, that is why it is inexpensive. Broad comprehensive overview of possible risk factors and morbidity, no technical equipment it is required, input from workers themselves helps to understand the participatory approach and can be used to evaluate the effect of solution implemented. These are the advantages. Some li limit limitations like you know self-reported data. So, you know there is always some chance of biasness. So, uh, it absolutely you know how you are explaining, how you are convincing them to participate honestly in your study. So, it comes through experience, it comes through uh, knowledge, also the kind of population you are dealing with. Reference group recommended, but uh, may not always be available as I mentioned earlier also. Less suitable uh, for smaller groups of worker, it is not possible for uh, small groups, no quantification of risk, cooperation of management and worker is very, very crucial because it takes time, it takes understanding both the things specifically it is a time consuming tool ok. So, 30 minutes from a work shift if you are taking it is a huge thing right uh, um, manpower time. <coughs> so, it, it needs a lot of cooperation from the management and the workers. Data entry can become uh, lab laborious because you know it is huge set of data ok 9 pages data uh, 14 pages data it is very detailed and more detailed data analysis requires statistical knowledge of course without understanding about statistics because lot of qualitative analysis is required over here. So, if you uh, initially you will get only the percentage value, however, how do you take it further? If you do not have statistical understanding, you may not interpret the data correctly, ok. So, these are the advantages or disadvantages of this particular tool. Uh, when we are talking about standard and regulation, DMQ can be used to comply with the need of the need for the employers to carry out a risk assessment of physical working condition. So, management can use it and it should be stressed that DMQ survey is only a tool to set priorities. Okay. So, it, it gives an understanding what is your priority for further analysis and development solution similarly for, for NMQ also. As I mentioned it takes around uh, for, for 9 pages it takes around 30 minutes for 4 pages maybe 20 minutes and the extended version it takes kind of 60 minutes. So, it is it's in a kind of very lengthy uh, thing. It depends in particular on uh, an educational background of the worker. So, um, NEOS survey that you can use for 
any variety of population maybe layman maybe very extreme you know uh, educated person um, uh, low socio economic background uh, high socio everywhere you can use uh, neos survey How, however for dmq you need some kind of you know minimal requirement of literacy and education and all those things because they have to respond it okay so it depends um, so in the background is important for the workers with less education maybe we recommend recommend that short version you can use however um, there may be some difficulty to administer so these are the uh, information you should keep in mind before you uh, go and choose this tool to use for your study so that's all um, what uh, tool you need um, pen and paper uh, data entry uh, you can have your computer excel uh, uh, to understand the data or to see the data also maybe spss or any other software uh, statistical software you can use or you can buy their own software which is available okay it's absolutely you how do you analyze so these are the things are required but um, you can start with simple pen and paper method so that's all uh, for dmq maybe we can go for some other tool in our next class Thank you.